Did the Godfather actors appear in The Sopranos? Yes. Dominic Chianese, known for Johnny Ola in The Godfather 2, is just one example. Lesser known actors like Richard Bright and John Apria also played significant roles in both, creating a riveting connection between these legendary mob sagas. Brace yourself for the surprising actor crossover that will astound you. Meet the maestro of mob drama, Dominic Chianese, the man behind the iconic Corrado Jr. Soprano in The Sopranos. But before he became the head honcho in New Jersey, Chianese strutted his stuff on off-Broadway stages, honing his craft under the watchful eye of acting guru Walt Whitcover. Fast forward to 1974, and Chianese found himself in the midst of mobster glory, scoring a breakout role as Johnny Ola in The Godfather 2. This was the turning point that catapulted him into the world of film, where he shared the spotlight with Al Pacino in hits like And Justice for All and Dog Day Afternoon. But don't let the tough guy exterior fool you. Chianese is not just a mob boss on screen. If only they knew the other side of you. He's also a crooner extraordinaire. In a memorable moment from The Sopranos' third season, episode 13, titled Army of One, Chianese serenades us with the sweet strains of an Italian love ballad. Goringrade. And who won't remember his hilarious anecdotes about the Chinese godfather or the blind man at the fish market? You hear about the Chinese godfather? He made them an offer they couldn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> so, whether he's orchestrating mob schemes, crooning romantic tunes, or even mumbling in the moss. South of the border, down Mexico way. Dominic Chianese proves he's the ultimate maestro of entertainment in the Sopranos universe. Meet the man, the myth, the wise guy, Albert Bariz, the unsung hero of Soprano Land. Season 2, Episode 2, Knight in White Satin Armor, was the birthplace of this Demio soldier a character who would carve his name into the gritty underworld of The Sopranos. Picture this. Ally Boy, played by the enigmatic Richard Maldone, struts into the scene, sharing the screen with Richie April. Little did we know, this moment marked the inception of a character who would rise through the ranks faster than you can say, Gabagool. Cousin to Larry Burris, Ally Boy's story takes a twist when Larry Boy gets the racketeering heat. Oh! In the blink of an eye, our man steps up as the acting capo, steering the crew through the murky waters of mob life. The Sopranos fans can attest, this guy left an indelible mark on the series. And if you think Maldon's only claim to fame is The Sopranos, think again. Our guy had a cameo in The Godfather 3, playing one of Joey Zasa's bodyguards. Did he get credit for it? Nope. But that's the thing about Ally Boy. He's the unsung hero, the silent force driving the narrative forward. Now let's talk about Maldon's audition for The Sopranos. He didn't just send in a resume and wait for a callback. This guy bypassed security like a true mobster on a mission. Picture Maldon strolling onto the set, locking eyes with James Gandolfini and dropping the bombshell. Someday I'm going to play on this show. Oh. Ballsy move, but hey, it worked. Interestingly, behind the scenes, Maldon's own life seemed to mirror the criminal underworld he portrayed on screen. His off-screen rap sheet reads like a script from a gritty crime drama, featuring a laundry list of convictions, assault, grand larceny, forgery, and possession of stolen property. In a plot twist that could rival any Hollywood script, Maldon found himself facing a staggering 15-year sentence for selling ketamine. However, this real-life drama took an unexpected turn, as Maldon, like a seasoned wise guy from The Sopranos, outsmarted the legal system and managed to evade the looming charges. <laughs> Step into the shadows of the Big Apple's underworld, where the legendary Tony Lip, the man who brought Carmine Lupertazzi Sr. to life, transcends the screen. Before his days as the crime boss in The Sopranos, Tony Lip was working as a manager at the Copacabana. But hey, even mobsters need a night out, right? Picture this. 1972, a smoky night at the Copacabana, and who strolls in? None other than Francis Ford Coppola. Destiny in the air? Absolutely. This chance encounter catapulted Tony Lip into the glitzy world of cinema, landing him a role as a henchman in the epic masterpiece, The Godfather. Talk about making an entrance. A blink and you'll miss it moment, but hey, every mobster's gotta start somewhere. Tony Lip's journey was a mobster's dream come true. 
Meet the man who turned stereotypes into cinematic gold. Jersey boy John Aprea, famously stereotyped as the bad guy due to his dark Italian looks. Ever wonder why he wasn't the iconic Michael Corleone in The Godfather? Well, he had to bide his time before landing the role of young Tessio in The Godfather 2. Playing opposite Robert De Niro and not uttering a word of English, Aprea considers it a career high point and relished the experience of working with the perfectionist maestro Francis Ford Coppola. But Aprea is not just a one-hit wonder in the gangster genre. Yet it was his brief stint in The Sopranos that added another feather to his cap. In the season one finale, Aprea brought U.S. attorney Gene Conigliaro to life, turning up the heat on a freshly arrested junior to spill the beans on Tony. According to Aprea, the success of The Sopranos lies in its ability to captivate audiences with the age-old tale of breaking free from injustice under the protection of stronger individuals. Despite his diverse roles, playing young Tessio in The Godfather, Part Two Inches holds a special place in Aprea's heart. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. Lights, camera, wise guys. Meet Tony Sirico, the man behind the iconic Polly Walnuts Gualtieri in The Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> who made the Veller tracksuit and wings in the hair combo a mob fashion statement. Before his days on the Jersey crime scene, Sirico had a cinematic journey that reads like a mobster's resume. Forget about the small roles. Sirico's big break wasn't handed to him on a silver platter. You might remember him from Goodfellas, Bullets Over Broadway, Gotti and Copland, but rewind the reel and you'll find him as an extra, blending into the background of The Godfather 2. Now let's cue the dramatic backstory. Sirico's path to the silver screen was paved during some quality time behind bars. Yes, you heard it right. Locked up and plotting his Hollywood takeover, he caught the acting bug. Post-release, he found his mentor in none other than Michael Gazzo, the man who brought Frank Pentangeli to life in The Godfather 2. Picture this. Two wise guys, one a seasoned actor, the other fresh out of the clink, sharing the screen as extras in The Godfather 2. It's like a mobster's version of a Hollywood origin story. Fast forward to The Sopranos, and Sirico's no-nonsense attitude and distinctive style earned him a permanent spot in the hearts of Sopranos fans everywhere. Pauly Walnuts Gualtieri, more than just a mobster, he's a cultural icon. <laughs> Meet Vito Antuafermo, the undisputed world middleweight champion turned Hollywood heavy hitter. From Italy to America at 17, he conquered the boxing ring facing off with legends like Marvin Hagler. But when the bell rang on his boxing career, Vito didn't throw in the towel. Instead, he became Donald Trump's bodyguard, delivered Coca-Cola, and worked the docks as a longshoreman. In the 90s, Vito made a knockout debut in the world of acting. Picture this, a one-two punch in Goodfellas and Godfather 3. In the former, he flashed a winning smile as a prize fighter greeting Joe Pesci's Tommy in a club. But it was in Coppola's masterpiece that he flexed more muscle as Anthony the Ant Squigilaro, the guy who casually dips his bullets in cyanide. For Vito, playing mob roles was a walk in the park. And his resume proves it, with appearances in Goodfellas, Godfather 3, and the ultimate mob saga, The Sopranos. There he played Bobby Zanone, the April crew associate who didn't mind getting his hands dirty, whether picking up garbage or handing it back to people. <laughs> Let's take a walk down the gritty streets of Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, and shine a spotlight on Richard Bright, the unsung hero of the Godfather trilogy and a familiar face in the mob-filled universe of The Sopranos. Born and bred in the heart of Bay Ridge, Bright found himself entangled in the world of Al Pacino early on. First, as his on-screen brother in The Panic in Needle Park in 71, and then, a year later, as his trusty bodyguard and cold-hearted assassin, Al Neri, in The Godfather. This guy was so good at playing the Enforcer that the Independent hailed him as one of the most powerful and suggestive characters, sitting or standing in the shadows. Despite his quiet demeanor, Bright's Neri was part of some of the trilogy's most memorable moments, shutting the door on Diane Keaton's K, bidding Fredo adieu to the fishes, and handling business at the Vatican in the third installment. Talk about a guy who knew how to make an entrance. While he may have pleaded with Coppola for more screen time, Bright's Neri still left an indelible mark. But it doesn't end there for Bright. He was no stranger to the mean streets of New Jersey. <laughs> In a season four episode of The Sopranos, 
he stepped into the shoes of grizzled hitman Frank Chrissy. In a single scene, he spun a chilling yarn about Chrissy decapitating a guy aptly named Tommy Neri. Well, Frank cut his head off with a hacksaw. Silent as a mouse pissing on cotton. Classic mob lore, right? Tragically, Bright's real-life story took a dark turn when he was hit by a bus in 2006 at the age of 68. A mobster on screen, a legend off screen, Richard Bright, you're forever etched in the hearts of the Sopranos faithful. Meet Frank Albanese, a man who traded his boxing gloves for a life in the spotlight after a brain injury forced him out of the ring. Thanks to his connection with legendary boxer Rocky Graziano, Albanese found himself stepping into the world of acting. Picture this. It's 1968, and Albanese lands his first gig in the mob drama, The Brotherhood. It's a minor role, but it's the beginning of a four-decade-long journey through the world of mafia-themed films. Now, here's where it gets interesting for all you Sopranos fans. Albanese pulls off a double whammy, appearing in two different Godfather films as two distinct characters. In 2008, he reminisced about his roles. I was the hitman in The Godfather, come busting through the room, and The Godfather 2, I was the Grand Marshal, leading the parade, and then they had this big shootout there. Everybody's running. But it's not just about the Godfather saga. Albanese leaves his mark in the iconic Goodfellas. Flashing one of the widest grins as Henry Hill's crooked lawyer, he recalls, Even though it was a minor role, I thoroughly enjoyed starring in Goodfellas. Albanese's most unforgettable role? No surprises here, The Sopranos. As Uncle Pat, he owned a farm where bodies were buried, and he had a knack for forgetting their precise locations. Uncle Pat was like Johnny Mnemonic, right, Uncle Pat? Huh? In the mysterious world of mob dramas, there's a behind-the-scenes tale that even the most die-hard Sopranos fans might have missed. Picture this. Don Tomasino, a character woven into the fabric of the Godfather trilogy, making his third cinematic appearance in Godfather 3. But here's the kicker. The original actor had already taken his final bow a year before filming. Enter Vittorio Deuce, an Italian thespian extraordinaire, stepping into Tomasino's shoes and, well, wheelchair. Deuce sat in the vacant throne of the fallen character, only to meet a cinematic demise that set the stage for Michael Corleone's ultimate vendetta in the epic finale. Yet, it was his role as Don Vittorio in a memorable episode of The Sopranos that resonated with American audiences. Wheelchair, a bully part. Picture this Sopranos moment. Our favorite Jersey mobsters gathered watching The Godfather 2. Tony Soprano, the boss himself, reveals one of his cherished scenes. Vito visiting a villa in the old country. What this thing needs is what we call a Brogan adjustment. Fast forward to Naples, where Tony and the gang seek an audience with Don Vittorio. But instead of the powerful figure they anticipated, they're met with a weakened version, bound by a wheelchair, rambling about New York's bridges and highways. Georgia, Washington, huh? bridge. In the world of mob dramas, Vittorio Deuce became the bridge between iconic cinematic universes. And as his character mumbled about infrastructure, Sopranos fans were treated to a unique crossover that left us wondering. What if Don Vittorio had shared cannoli with the Corleones? Georgia, Washington, huh? If you're as intrigued as we are by the blurred lines between fiction and reality in the mob world, then you won't want to miss our full video on the Sopranos actors turned criminals in real life. Hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and drop your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, stay wise and don't forget to hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching.